Hey YouTube, Jesse Showalter here today with another tutorial in a series that I'm calling Let's Make That in Sketch, where I show you how to make awesome designs using the popular uh, design program called Sketch for Mac. Today we're gonna be making the Spark email landing page, and if you stick around for the extra credit, we'll even be animating it with a prototyping tool called Flinto. So, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. You can see right here on my screen, I have the Spark email original screenshot that I pulled off of my device. And uh, so you can see what's on the page is a nice gradiated blue background. Uh, it's got some clouds with kind of a cool aesthetic, so we'll zoom in uh, so you can kind of see what they got going on there. It's kind of like an inner shadow look. Um, they have a, their interesting like kind of branding or their logo. So we'll try to recreate that as well. Uh, they have some simple kind of typography underneath with a uh, with their name and then also kind of an explanation of what they do or kind of like a value proposition. And then at the very bottom they have these really cool clouds. So really that's what we're doing today is that cool cloud aesthetic um, and a little bit of their logo. Really, really simple. But in doing so we're going to show you how we use Sketch and the awesome tools that it provides and uh, that's what we're doing today so let's get started and i'm going to make a brand new artboard so i'm just going to copy this one over and we're going to call this new example okay um, and what's really great and what i've always really loved about sketch is the whole artboard experience so i can have multiple artboards on a page i can zoom out and look at all of them um, i can if I like something, it's kind of like Illustrator in that way where I can just recreate a new artboard. If I want to practice or I want to try something different, I can literally just duplicate that artboard, start messing with it, and, and I, I feel like the organization is so much better in doing that than other programs, maybe like Illustrator. So um, if you're looking for the quick key to make an artboard, you just press A and you get a whole list of artboards, or you can just draw one out. So we'll get rid of that little mini artboard we made. But we have our new example, and what we want to do is we want to put that uh, nice background, that gradient background on there. So first thing we're going to do is just grab a rectangle. You can do that by going to this rectangle shape. Your panel might look a little bit different in the top hand bar. That's because I've kind of like customized mine to how I like it. Um, and maybe I'll do another video as to why I've done that. But So we've dragged a shape out. You can see it's just called a rectangle. We're going to rename it BG for background. And we're going to give it a fill by clicking on the fill panel. We're going to hit the gradient. okay, And then we're going to start at the top where it's white. We're just going to get that color picker and go to the very top. okay, And then we'll go to the very bottom and we will choose the very bottom one. Ta-da! We have the background, okay? So that's pretty cool. What I like to do as I go, just my personal workflow and sketch is, it, you know, I don't want to be building stuff on top of this layer and be moving it around by accident. So what I like to do is just come up and if you hover over the layer and press Option Alt, you'll see that you get the little lock symbol instead of the disappear symbol. Okay, so I'm gonna lock that layer so now I can just play on top of it and that feels really, really good. Next thing we're gonna be making is the clouds at the very bottom of the screen. So to do that, we're literally just gonna be, um, we're gonna be making shapes and slamming them together into a combined shape, kind of like you would do in Illustrator. And we can do that really easily in Sketch. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag out a rectangle and that'll be kind of like the base of my clouds and then I'm gonna build my clouds on top of it and you know and this is kind of like uh, if you've ever been in any sort of basic art class they always tell you anything can be broken down into its most basic shapes right so um, and that's what we're doing here we're just gonna take some circles now and we're just gonna be duplicating those circles and just kind of I'm not trying to make it look exact you know, and you can even play with making them not look so perfect and spherical, but you can make some more ovals and stuff like that. So now we're just having fun and we'll speed this up a little bit. Um, and we will, so you can see the progress made. Okay, so we finished creating our cloud. It doesn't look exactly the same, it could probably use a few improvements, but we'll probably stop there for tutorial's sake. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look in the left-hand column in our layers panel, and we're going to see all of the different shapes we've made into the cloud. We're going to select them all, or you could have done that by just dragging and selecting all of them on the artboard itself. And we're going to 
similar to Illustrator if you've ever used that. We're just gonna press Union and we're gonna merge all of them into a combined shape. What's really cool about this is this is non-destructive editing. So if I go up in my layers panel, I can see it says combined shape and we're just gonna call that the bottom cloud. But if I twirl open the arrow, you can see all of my individual shapes and if I ever wanna go back in and edit them, it's as simple as clicking on one and changing the shape of it. So that's really, really cool. That's a, a real basic overview of combining shapes. Um, but you can do all sorts of fun stuff with those kind of quote unquote pathfinder tools, subtracting, intersecting, uh, make, finding the difference in between, and we'll actually be using that a little in a little bit here. So stick with me for that. Uh, so next thing we wanna do is we wanna create that uh, kind of not, it's not transparent, but it's just a lighter shade. Um, and so it gives that look of transparency and kind of depth to the design. And those are those little clouds tucked behind the main cloud layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat and I'm just gonna take this cloud layer and I'm gonna duplicate it, okay? And then I'm gonna make some changes. I'm gonna just kind of shrink it. I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna hold down. I'm gonna go to the corner in sketch. I'm gonna hold down the command button and that allows me to rotate. So I'm just gonna rotate it like this, and I'm gonna do a, a fill. It's kind of similar to one of those colors. So there we go. Now I have like kind of a new fill layer there, and we'll bring it out maybe right there. And I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna flip it back the other way. And I'm not even gonna change any of the, like, the, the clouds inside. I'm literally just gonna smush it. Or maybe I'll raise it. Yeah, I'll smush it a little bit like that. And I'm gonna pick a totally different color maybe like a darker one, because this one's gonna go all the way behind, and I'm gonna do like that, okay? So is it perfect? Probably not. Is it good enough? Yeah, because Spark already made this design, so we're not trying to make it from scratch or make it look perfect, we're just trying to learn a little bit here. So I'm gonna tuck that right there, and then just for organization's sake, always organize your layers. I'm gonna go up and select all the clouds, and I'm gonna press Command G, I'm gonna make the cloud group right there. So we're gonna call it uh, bottom clouds, okay? And of course, then we're gonna lock uh, it into place. If you don't want to do the whole hover and command option, I like to just select layers and press command shift L. That's like the hotkey for just locking things into place. So now we have our clouds locked and we can continue to work over our design. So let's keep cruising. We're doing pretty good so far. Now we need to do a similar process. We need to make those clouds that are uh, throughout the rest, the top of the design. So uh, we're gonna zoom in a little bit and just kind of see how they did those. Um, yeah, okay, we can do that. So what we'll do is we'll come back over here and we're gonna find a rounded square. And we're gonna drag that out just to be kind of like that bottom base. You can see right here, it has kind of like a bottom base, okay? And then we're gonna do something similar to what we did before, which is just start dragging out. And maybe what I'll do is, um, Maybe let's do it over here on this artboard first so you can see, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna just start dragging out some clouds like this, kind of tucking those little clouds in, and obviously it's gonna have some sort of um, shading on the inside of the clouds, so we can do that as well, but first we need to get the base shapes for our clouds. So let's get this cloud in there. So now we're going to, you know, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I've got the time. I'm gonna make a copy out of this and I'm gonna duplicate it and pull it over here and I'm just gonna flip it like that. And so now we have our cloud um, and it's kind of even on both sides. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the shape. Now this is really cool for playing with shapes is I'm just gonna press return and it opens up the editing capabilities now where I can add new points on the shape. So I'm gonna add a point there, there, and one right in the middle. I'm just gonna drag it up to cover the rest of that space. Okay, now we have a little bit of cloud. Is it perfect? No, we could probably play with it a little bit, and we will, just to make things really nice like how we want them. So let's do that. And that, that looks a little bit better to me. They're kind of cartoony, fun little clouds. So now we have a cloud, okay? Now the next step in this process is to put those little highlights um, onto the clouds. And so that's gonna be interesting because I don't actually know how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna try it out right now. I forget how I did it on the first demonstration, so. Um, interesting, okay, all of these are a shape right here. So we can just group all of them and we'll call it a cloud, okay? 
you can group things, you can combine shapes. I don't know. It, it, I, I, combining shapes is nice. It's you know, but I, I still have similar control if I just group it and go back into it. In this case, I'm just going to group it. Uh, so now I have this group called Cloud. Okay, but I want to. Here's the deal. I want to figure out that shading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another shape. Okay, I'm going to make this one like a soft shade of blue and then I'm gonna move this thing up here and then I'm gonna grab the two and then I'm going to oh, not the difference we want to subtract there we go so we're gonna just subtract now we have a perfect kind of edge for that cloud okay so it still looks a little bit harsh right so we want to maybe blur it a little bit and the amount of blur is really going to matter. So that, we're gonna do it like that. I'll keep a little, it's kind of foggy, it's kind of hazy, you know, which is okay. Uh, we don't mind that. But uh, if you look at this cloud, we're gonna zoom in real tight. This shading is gonna stop right here, okay? Oh, you know, yeah, it's gonna stop right there. And then we have these little kind of like puffs that go in front of it. So we're gonna wanna do that for each individual like tuft of the cloud. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. Okay. And we are back. So now what we have is the cloud and it has kind of some of that hazy kind of like texture contour at the edge of the cloud. So we're gonna grab the whole thing, we're gonna group together and we're gonna call it cloud one and we're gonna move it off of our example board. We're gonna move it over here and we're just gonna shove it off to the right hand side. Then what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna cheat a little bit and just kind of speed up. We're gonna take this one and we're gonna press Command K and that's gonna allow us to scale down evenly. And we're just gonna tuck this other one back here and drop the transparency of it down like that. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to zoom in and we're just gonna edit this cloud a little bit by removing some of its tufts and we'll put that there, we'll put that there. Great, we're gonna just bounce that up. I like that. And we'll remove that. We're gonna make a really small cloud, okay? Um, and to do so, we're just going to kind of pull in our shape. This is all like real, real janky. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's a cloud, clouds are organic shapes. So we're just gonna pull that whole thing in like that. And we have a little, little poofy cloud now, okay? So we can, let's make sure we call this cloud one, call the other one cloud two. And as we kind of go down the page and pop them on the page, we'll call this one cloud three. And we'll duplicate that one. And maybe we'll change the size of it and just lead it off on this side. And we'll drop the opacity down also on that one, we'll call that one cloud four, okay? And then we'll, of course, we'll take all those clouds and let's put them in a group called clouds and then we will lock that group, okay? So now you can see our structure is really like kind of coming together. We have that bottom cloud patch. We have all of our little poofy clouds around the top. Um, and now we're gonna work on making that logo and just dialing in that logo a little bit. So um, is it gonna be perfect? Probably not. Is it gonna be close? Probably, so let's do it. Uh, first things first, let's get the text out of the way. So we'll just grab uh, our text tool and click and we'll write Spark and we'll get out of this atrocious font and we'll go back to Arial, okay? And we will stick with bold and maybe we'll drop it down to like 80, maybe even 70, 60, let's go 70, okay? And I'm just gonna align it there and align it there and then I'll cheat, pop it up a little bit. And I'm gonna make a duplicate right here. Call love your email again. That's nice. And we'll take that down to regular. We will drop the size of that, maybe up to 40. And then we will center, center. Make sure the text is centered so that when we do all that centering, drop the size down a little bit more. 
maybe right there. And we'll just drag that up, get a decent spacing, and there you go. So now we have our thing put in place and we will lock that in. We'll call that uh, the type layer, we'll lock that layer. So now we are just continuing to work on top of our canvas. And now we're just gonna hone in on this logo piece real quick. So it's pretty much just a bunch of triangle shapes. So with some slight gradients. Sketch is interesting. I, I wouldn't call it the best thing for logo design. And so um, I would probably do this in a different program to make this really, really precise and exact. But I think for this case, it, it'll work. We'll bring it all together. So let's drag out a triangle um, for our first shape. We're just gonna drag that out like that. And we're gonna hit return. That's gonna enter into the edit um, kind of area of the shape. And that's nice. So let's click out, let's press escape to click outside of that real quick. And we'll see that's going at an angle. So we're gonna pop that right there, hit enter and go into edit again. Bring that up to the top like that. And we'll just drop this down to the side. Now they have rounded corners, what it looks like on the top and on the edge over here. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna take that corner and I'm just gonna start rounding it. That looks kind of like similar. And you can see it actually, when it rounds, it actually starts rounding away from the corner. So to compensate, we have to pull that corner out a little further. Is that funky? I'm not really sure. I'm not the biggest fan of it because it doesn't seem as precise, but we're gonna do a similar thing here. We're gonna round and we're gonna pull up, okay? And so now we have our first shape, which is obviously going to be our second shape. So we're just gonna bring that across and we're gonna press the flip button, which is really easy. You don't have to go into some sub menu and hit mirror or reflect or any nonsense like that. So that's really nice. Um, and then we are going to, let's just move these out of the way. You can see there's the start of our shape for our logo. Let's do another triangle. Okay, and put the point or the edge of it down there. We're gonna move this top. Okay, and right to there. And then we'll manipulate this corner, which is like a straight corner. And this looks like it's also kind of straight, although it looks like it has a minor, maybe very minor like rounding to it. So we'll do that, compensate for the border radius that's there. And this is also gonna have a rounded corner to kind of meet up with our other rounded corner shape. So we're gonna bring that to the top there. And I don't know, that might work, it might not. Let's see, let's bring it over into place. Okay, is that, how's that looking? Okay, so we'll do another one of these and we will flip. Okay, ooh, it looks a little bit off, doesn't it? Oh, well, we're gonna adjust. We're gonna work with what we got here. So let's take this shape and this shape and we will just bump it in. And that looks all right. And then what we'll do is we're gonna zoom in real tight, even so you, all the way in so that you can like see the pixels pretty much. And we are going to just start working these shapes kind of into place. We're just massaging things now. Like we're gonna bring, we're gonna cheat a little bit and just bring that over. And we're gonna cheat and we're gonna just bring that over. And now we have like one kind of conical shape at the top, like real smooth looking. Now let's do colors. I think all of them have like a mild, like a really small border around the edge. So we'll do a border, not so thick. We'll probably do like 0.25 border. And I think it's kind of like a very white blue color, almost white, because the rest of it's gonna be other colors. So now let's start with the gradient. We're gonna just move in here and we're gonna fill it with a gradient selecting for the black what's the bottom most color oh, let's actually go back sorry selecting for the black what's the most bottom color and then clicking over here on this top one which would have been the white and going to the very top and now let's just kind of like work our gradient in there a little bit do we want it to be darker do we want it to be lighter probably get a little bit lighter like that there we go um, that's good, I like that. Um, so, okay, so to save time, I think the other one looks similar. So we're gonna just copy the style here 
and we'll come in and we'll paste the style right in there. And that's a good start, kind of. And now this is gonna be a little bit darker, so we'll paste the style to get it started, but then we'll come back into the fill and we're gonna darken this one up because this one is quite a bit darker down. And then up at the top, I think it's even still a bit darker. So we have some weird stuff happening. Or I think it's not, there we go. There we go. It's a bit dark, so let's lighten it up. Just a little bit like that, okay? I think it's, like right up here at the top, I think it's a little bit wider and softer, but you know, I think for like, for this purpose, it, it's gonna work. We're not trying to do necessarily like a logo design tutorial. So let's do a similar thing. We'll paste the style in here, and maybe we'll just do, I think we're kind of changing the, the area of the direction. Okay, let's change a little bit of the direction of this logo. That'll make it a bit, whoops, more interesting. Okay, I don't like it ending at pure white at the very top. What's happening with my life right now? Design is imperfect. Here we go. Let's do that. Okay, so again, not the most perfect Spark logo, but eh, whatever. For our purposes, it will work from a distance. Ugh. Okay. Um, like I said, you probably want to do that logo in a different program just because you'd have more fine-tuned uh, like control over everything. I think Spark, or excuse me, I think Sketch is really, really great for interface design. Uh, maybe some icon design, but maybe not logo design. So uh, now we have our design. It's looking kind of cool. Um, we are going to move into the extra credit now where we animate uh, this sequence um, using a program called Flinto. So if you're into that, stay tuned. If not, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button below, and we'll catch you for the next one.